All right, so this week we are in period five. The biggest thing that is happening in period five is the Industrial Revolution. So at the top of your notes, you should have period five, which ranges from 1750 to 1900. Okay, so from 1750 to 1900, the biggest thing that's happening is the Industrial Revolution. Now, the Industrial Revolution is going to begin in what country, ladies and gentlemen? England. Why does it start in England, Lauren? Um, they have resources like coal and um, iron. There you go. So the Industrial Revolution is going to start in England, and it has plenty of coal and iron ore. Don't you remember that map we did? Right, with all the little dots, and you had to draw all the trains. Remember, Jack's like, oh my god, that was the best week of my life, right? It was so exciting. Uh, it's going to spread very quickly to the United States, France, and Germany. Um, they're going to pick it up really, really quickly. Now, with the Industrial Revolution starting, it immediately starts what else? Imperialism is the next big thing that happens. Because of imperialism, imperialism is when a country takes over another country politically, economically, and socially. What are the big reasons why imperialism is happening? What are they looking for? No, they don't need land. What do they need, Micah? They need markets and raw materials. Markets and raw materials. Perfect. Okay, so they're looking for markets and raw materials. So imperialism is when a country is taken over politically, economically, and socially. This is primarily what's being done in Africa. Okay. Now when we talk about Africa, who are our big leading um, invaders? Who are the two big countries, Max? England and France. England is going to take over East Africa, Egypt. We've all seen the mummy. They all speak what in the mummy? English. Absolutely. They all have their little English accents. <coughs> Uh, France is going to take over West Africa and Northern Africa, too. Their big colony is going to be Algeria. They're going to be one of the first places they take it over, and they're going to hold it the longest. Okay, and that's going to cause a lot of problems for France post-World War II. Um, India is going to go to England. Okay, with that being said, it's going to be the jewel in the crown. Um, are the Indians that thrilled with it? Now, there's pros and cons, of course, to imperialism. Pros is what? What are the pros to imperialism? The Europeans are really good at doing what? Max? Well, I mean, one of the pros is that uh, they spread industrialization. No, they don't. No, they don't. Would we say that in, uh, India was fully industrialized after during the British? No, they were using it for raw materials. So they have some factories there, but it's not fully industrialized. Biggest thing is they are building infrastructure, bridges, roads. All of these things are being built for the first time in India. Um, better farming techniques and all that stuff is going to be cons. Is the destruction of culture. What? Algeria? Oh, north too. Okay, so pros are you're building infrastructure, you got bridges and all that stuff. Then you have uh, the cons are the destruction of culture, obviously eradication of rights, all that stuff um, going through. So India is going to be conquered, of course, by the English. Now, we have imperialism and then we have spheres of influence. There's a difference between imperialism and spheres of influence. Imperialism is when you dominate a country politically, economically, and socially. Spheres of influence is when a country dominates another country's economy. They don't control the laws. Obviously, do they have influence over the laws? Yes, of course, England's going to stack the deck in their favor. However, it's not going to be um, completely under their control. Unlike India, which is completely under England's control. Like Algeria is completely under France's control. Egypt is completely under England's control and all that stuff. So, spheres of influence are only going to allow a country to be conquered economically. So they just control the markets. How does England and other European countries get their hold over China? What major conflict, Jack? The answer is up there. What major conflict is going to allow Europeans? The Opium War, absolutely. The Opium War. Who can summarize the Opium War for me? Micah. 
The Chinese are buying opium. Yeah, the Chinese are buying opium from the British. Where are the in, uh, British getting uh, their opium from? India. Yes. And they were buying it from them, and then um, it was ruining the Chinese economy, so they stopped buying it, and the British wanted to keep buying it, so they like bought them. Mm -hmm. And the Chinese inside were also fighting as well. So it is going to end in unequal treaties or unbalanced treaties. Who wins the opium war, ladies and gentlemen? Britain, because they are industrialized. Why wasn't China rushing to industrialization? Who can raise your hand and tell me why China wasn't rushing? Isabella. They had political problems. They had political problems, and what else was happening? What else? Uh, Dean. Um, there were already, well, that country, there were already, like, dominant in the world, so they really have to be industrialized. Yeah, everyone was coming to them and buying off their stuff they already had, so why are they going to change their entire economy? with this new technology from Europe. So like, no, everyone's coming to us anyway, why change? You know, so they didn't. And because of that, England's gonna gain the advantage. So when we talk about spheres of influence, um, we're talking about England coming in and exploiting China. Of course, we're gonna see other countries like France, Germany, and Russia coming in as well. Um, as you remember your maps from this week, hello? Yes. So we're gonna have uh, two major revolts. Um, we have the Boxer Rebellion, which peasants are pissed off about foreign influence, and it's going to bring more military by Europeans into China. Then we have the Taiping Rebellion, which uh, peasants are attacking Europeans again, and we're going to see the government changes, more stricter government regulations. So, that is all of your industrialized industrial revolution starts in England and then it's going to cause imperialism and spheres of influence directly. All right, we good? I hope you guys did get started on your Barron's book this weekend, did we? Okay. It's funny because I don't want you focusing on any no, I've said that once to you. I've said that once to you. No, I said I didn't want you doing anything on Friday, on your day off. Why would I not want you working on AP World? I don't know. I spent all day Friday and Saturday working on AP World. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for listening closely. I hope you guys did enjoy your three-day weekend, though, did you? Well, Max, there's nothing I can do about that, man. So, um, but yeah, hopefully you did do something over the weekend so you don't have as stressful a week as last week. Can we agree? That was crazy last week. That was awful. That was a terrible week. So hopefully you got something done so it's not as crazy. Or you can think I didn't say don't do anything and have a really stressful week. Aiden. All right. So Age of Revolutions is also the other major thing that has happened during period five. Um, period five and period six, ladies and gentlemen, are super, super dense. Do you remember this as we went through them? Yes. A lot of moving parts. So the first revolution is where? America. So the American Revolution. When we're talking about the American Revolution, it's 1776. The major quote is, no taxation without representation. The 13 colonies rebel against England over political control and democracy. They believe that as colonists of England, they should be represented by the Magna Carta that says that taxation, uh, no taxation without representation. However, what was the English counterpoint to this? You're a colony, you're not technically a British citizen anymore. The only people who are represented in the British uh, Parliament are actual citizens in England. Everyone else is represented by the Parliament. So with that being said, that's what they were arguing, which is a pretty fair argument. Could you, would you agree? Instead of having a representative from all of their colonies in Parliament all the time, that would be insane because they had like 300 colonies. So cost effective, it makes a lot of sense. For England, not really that much for us. So uh, we're going to go to war over it. So George Washington, he's going to be obviously leading the U.S. military. He's a military genius. He's going to use spies, all that stuff, in order to help win. Remember, we were a bunch of farmers overthrowing the most powerful military nation the world's ever seen. So, pretty impressive, um, which was done not on the battlefield, by the way, because <laughs> we would have been murdered. 
So the two major battles that you do need to know for the American Revolution, of course, is Yorktown is the final battle. England surrendered because of the French Navy. You need to know Valley Forge. Um, it's a colonist surprising win. This is kind of turning the tides for the American Revolution. It's going to gain European favor, uh, which means other countries are going to send money and aid and support in order to help the United States after this surprising win. Uh, the other person that you do need to know is Ben Franklin. He's the colonial represent, uh, representative to France. Um, he gains favor with France. Ben Franklin was like the, one of the world's largest celebrities. Everyone knew Ben Franklin's name. Like in a time where individuals were mostly just major names for our political leaders, you have a guy named Ben Franklin who is famous for his science and his witty comments and essays and stuff that would get published around the world. So they sent Ben Franklin, the American rock star, to Paris to woo the ladies and persuade the men to support. And because of him, um, France ends up sending their navy, which is why we win the Battle of Yorktown, all that stuff. So does Jackson go over after the He's there, but Jefferson it takes himself way too serious and is like super, super cranky. And he doesn't like all of the, he doesn't like the French. He doesn't trust the French, so he's not like a real charming guy. Ben Franklin is throwing like the best parties in town and all the wealthy, the nobles and all that stuff want to hang out with him. And Jefferson's just there in the corner <coughs> talking and annoying people. So the reason why the French give aid is not because of Jefferson. Everyone likes Jefferson, but no one like wants to hang out with Jefferson. You know? Alright. So then welcomes in the French Revolution. So the American Revolution happens in 1776. French Revolution happens in 1789. It's inspired, of course, by the American Revolution. Um, the people fight Louis the Sixteenth because of his spending in the American Revolution and his wife. Okay, they kill Louis the Sixteenth and the royal family. And the first phase, of course, is the French Revolution, and this is when the people overthrow the king. Okay. What is the name of the system that was in France before the French Revolution? Anyone remember? What do we got, Jessica? A state general. Government structure, government pre French Rev. One of my good friends is in Paris right now, posting like a million pictures. I hate him. So the first estate is who? Uh, no, it's the second. First estate is your king and your priests. Your second estate is who? Nobles. Clergy would work, yeah. Nobles. Okay, you're wealthy. And your third estate is what? Everyone else. And they make up what? 98, something like that, 97% of population. Every estate gets one vote. unfair and bias. So you have the tennis courts accords, which is when the third estate gets together. They're in the major hall at the Palace of Versailles. They are pissed off, so they run out to the tennis courts, and they're like, you know what, screw it. Let's do this. Let's burn it down. And then they run back into the city, and they start tearing down the city. What is the most famous battle, uh, most famous event inside the French Revolution, Max? Uh... Uh, Bastille. 
the Bastille, okay? And that's going to happen on July 5th. Yes, July 5th, 19, no, not 19, 1789. Storming the Bastille on July 5th, 1789 is the official start. Once the French Revolution is underway, we have the second phase. What is the second phase? Reign of Terror. Who is in charge of the Reign of Terror? Who is it, Aiden? Maximilian. Robespierre. Beheads. Everyone who oppose. Opposes new government. Kills all nobles. Very bloody. Okay, so we have the reign of terror, and then what is the third and final stage of the French Revolution? Is who, Lily? He's famous for being short, though. He wasn't really short. Napoleon. Napoleon rises during reign of power, reign of terror. Okay, creates. French Empire. How much longer do I have? Okay, so Napoleon rises during Reign of Terror, creates French Empire, overthrows. Government. What is his position before he overthrows it? He's at in this position of two. Max? Uh, overthrows government as consulate. Consulate. Okay, what are some of Napoleon's major accomplishments? So we have the Napoleonic Code. Why is that a big deal? Why do we care about it, Aiden? We care about it because it was just like the formula for the law. Becomes new foundation of laws. And what does it give? No. What does it give, Lily? <coughs> Religious freedom is the big thing. Religious freedom is the big thing. Okay. What other big things is Napoleon Napoleon doing? Max. Okay. He is conquering. Um, he's conquers tons of territory. I'm gonna do invasion of Russia. That fails. Weekends. Him. Okay. What else is a big thing that he does? Dean? Exiled. Eat him. Okay. He, what's his last battle, people? Waterloo. Waterloo. Last battle. <coughs> Loses to England. Exiled for good. Okay. Post Napoleon, what do we have? What is the big thing that happens post Napoleon? What's the big conference where everyone gets together and talks about the way things change? Uh, it is the Vienna Conference? No. Congress of Vienna. Congress of Vienna, all states are, when you can't invade them because you want to. Sovereign. sovereign, yeah, all states are sovereign. No more invasions. There you go, so that's your big thing. So those are the big outcomes of the French Revolution. Okay, what is our third major place that things are happening? Haiti, the Haitian Revolution. 
Haitian Revolution is going to be led by who? Toussaint Lay Overture. He is a former slave. Causes re revolution during Napoleonic Wars. From France. Wins. Inspired by J. Wash, G. Wash and inspires Latin America. Do we about? So those are the big three that you need to know. What's up? Do Napoleon like America? No one takes them seriously. At this point, they're in isolation. They're not trying to deal with anything. All right, so period five. You have Industrial Revolution. You have the Age of Revolutions. Of course, we could talk about the Latin American. What, when you think about Latin American revolutions, what do you think about them? What is important to know about them, Dean? Simon Bolivar. Okay, Simon Bolivar is totally going to lead a bunch of them. But are they successful or are they very tumultuous? Yes, they are up and down, up and down, constant. Mexico has like 19 revolutions. Okay, and that's pretty intense. All right, so what else is happening in period five? What are some other big things that are happening in period five? Max? Uh, Growth of nationalism is going to be a big deal. Not that any of you knew that for your short answers. Growth of nationalism. Okay, so England... They're going to be the world power, the world power. Colonies all around the world. Okay, they are going to conquer most of Africa. Uh, I'm going to write half. And a lot of Asia. Okay. They are going to um, have article. What are some of the cultural things that they talk about that inspires nationalism? They got... That happens in four. What are some of the cultural things that they write? Who are some of the big names culturally? Oh. Like what? Yeah, it's for some reason the book. It's like Sigmund Freud and Albert Einstein. White Man's Burden. White Man's Burden. Okay. Europeans had the responsibility. to help all people with government and economics. Okay, what is the name of the guy who is really behind White Man's Burden? Lily? Yeah. Rudard Kipling. Jungle Book. Rudard. Is it Rudolph? <coughs> no, it's Rudard. It's Kipling. It's Kipling. All right, goodbye. Have a good day, guys. What's up? Thank you. I'm not thrilled.